welcome to my sewing room, my very special place. Actually, anywhere that you sew is a special place. Sewing to me is expressing joy while sewing beautiful things. We sew because we love to sew. The assembling of a project one piece at a time is very rewarding to me. It is one of the few things that I do that doesn't ever unravel. It brings a sense of accomplishment. Isn't it great to wear one-of-a-kind garments? Now let's grow our sewing skills together as we spend time in my sewing room. I have the cutest outfit you have ever laid your eyes on for you today. So much fun. These little crop pants are absolutely adorable and they have the most wonderful cuff with machine embroidery. We have seahorses and starfish and the green cuff has been attached to the blue bottom of the pants with Spanish hem stitching, which is really an interesting look. Isn't this top adorable? They, it's the green with the blue trim and there is a little mermaid on the front and little pearls have been glued down as she's swimming under the sea. You are just going to love the band on the bottom of this shell. It has little mermaids holding hands, swimming all around. This is, by the way, not only on the front, it's also on the back. Once again, this wonderful Spanish hem stitching has been used to attach the bottom part of this shell to the main body of the shell. Now, when you're doing machine embroidery, placement is very important. I'm going to share with you a few ideas. I start this, at, by the way, this is the cuff of the pants. I start with one piece of fabric. I'm going to press the halfway point and then press the halfway point or mark the halfway point on, the, on one half of the piece only. Now, after putting tearaway stabilizer behind this point I marked, we're going to do the machine embroidery. Next, this piece is going to be sewn into a tube. So I will sew down one side, turn it right side out, and this is what it looks like. Remember, we did the machine embroidery. This is a finished edge, and the bottom of the pants leg has a finished edge also. That's where we're going to do the Spanish hem stitching. Now, I happen to have here um, an open work plate and foot. However, you can just baste these pieces down if you don't happen to have this. And then there are a number of stitches that can be used for the Spanish hem stitching. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Jody Hooker. Jody is a Husqvarna Viking educator, and we've done lots of sewing seminars together. And Jody, it is my pleasure to have you here on the show today. Thanks, Martha. I excited to be here. Well, show us how you made those darling things you made. <laughs> well, thank you. First of all, what you want to do is you want to determine what size that you want your, your pant leg hem. So if it's like a five inch uh, border that you want, you want to have 10 inches in the width. Then what you want to do from the fold, give it a nice press from the fold, measure down the placement for your embroidery. And there are so many different types of embroideries that you can use, uh, lots of fun summary types of embroidery. You can use motifs, any, anything that you wanna do. You've got your embroidery and you need to stabilize. After we get done with that, we're gonna turn right sides together. We're gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then the fun part. Oh. We're gonna do a little open work. Do a little open work. <laughs> a little open work. Now, Jody, let me ask you something. If someone does not have an embroidery machine, could you use the same technique for other types of embellishments? Correct. You could use like water soluble stabilizer, stitch the two together, and then um, and do your Spanish hem stitching. And if one if one really wanted to do applique, the same principle, wouldn't it, on placement? Okay. That's right. The okay. same principle. Now, when we did the when we did the embroidery here. We want to have like a fold, so we're not going, the seam allowance is going to go to the bottom so that we're oh, not having that okay. extra bulk. Okay. And you always want to have a finished edge on both pieces. To do the Spanish hem stitching. To do the open work. That's okay. right. So we're going to set that down. There's a little divider in our plate. And then you're just going to stitch 
with one side of the fabric going on one side of the fabric and the stitch going on the opposite side of the fabric. Oh, that is fascinating. Keep on sewing. Fun? Let me ask you a question. Sure. Are there a lot of different stitches you can use for open work? There are several different stitches that you can use. Okay. You want to make sure that you have a stitch that's going to have some kind of a, um, goes over to the left and to the right. Could feather stitch, for those people that don't have a, a fancy machine, would feather stitch be a good one to use? Feather stitch is really beautiful. Okay, okay. Very pretty. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'll show you the best part is that we used a heavier thread in the top. So it gives even a more decorative or a heavier look of that stitch. You know what, let me just show, let's just put this over there so our viewers can see those adorable pants again. There we go. Oh my goodness. Lots of fun things. You can apply this to the bottom of your top, a cuff. You can use it for children's clothing, adult clothing. There's so many ways that you can use this stitching. I think that would be beautiful in almost any application. A woman's suit, yeah. great on pillowcases too, if you really wanted to do something That's special right. for a pillowcase. That's Jody, right. that is the most adorable <laughs> outfit. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing these techniques with us. And now we have some sewing inspirations for you. Jody, you have brought some of the most wonderful things to share for ideas. Now, what did you do? Did you say you made this fabric on the bottom of this wonderful jacket? I did. On the peplum, I did some decorative stitching and sewed all around the fabric and then cut out the peplum pieces. Now look at the sleeves. Do I detect Spanish hem stitching? Yes, you did. Absolutely right in beautiful. There. And then, um, a really nice tip for you is to add piping to the bottom. Just, it gives a beautiful oh, accent to the, it. Oh, it does, on yeah. the bottom of the peplum. That mm -hmm. is adorable. A little fall school dress. Oh, I do love back to school time. Absolutely adorable, again, with the Spanish hem stitching, attaching the uh, machine embroidered piece. And you know, you, you could actually do applique or just have a little plain border on the bottom. Isn't that the sweetest way, though, of putting a little decorative trim? And I happen to love the flowers. Oh, Jody, this is so sweet. Oh, a little corduroy coat. Well, living in Michigan, we need to have a little bit of a corduroy at Easter time. <laughs> okay, you know, my mother used to, I always had a little coat at Easter time, and I had two or three coats a year that my mama made. So mm -hmm. when I looked at this, it really did remind me of when I was a little girl, and mama always made us an Easter coat. Yeah. And I like the buttons, too. The buttons add just a pretty accent to oh, the coat. Oh, they're so pretty. Ties they're pink and blue and yeah. very sp And then little machine embroidery on the collar. Yeah. Another sweet little dress. Okay, Jody, what did you do here? Well, this one's a little bit of work. It was, um, it was all embroidered. And we have a special... All the machine? Yeah, of all, course. all done by machine. The embroidery anglais, I absolutely mm, love. It, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you know what this looks like? It looks as if it were from Switzerland. It were embroidered the fabric a long time ago, and they may still make it, but not much. You would have the pieces of fabric from Switzerland, yeah. and then this beautiful embroidery, and now you can do it on the sewing machine. You can. Oh, how much fun. <laughs> a little summer dress with yeah. little pockets. And I call that my pop-up dress. Can you see where the little... <laughs> The little flower goes over top of the turtle it's and three dimensional. Little, yep, it no, gives that, that little keeps dimension. that little turtle gives the turtle <laughs> a little bit of uh, shade in the summertime. Yeah, what and this little definitely girl. can be an applique project to put on your bodice. Just do your applique first, and then cut out the front bodice afterwards, and you've got a great. Um, yeah, bodice front. Okay. Now this is what I can assure you my granddaughters would <laughs> love. Tell us about this. Well, most of it is done with the serger. Okay. You know, we love the serger. Yes. <laughs> and we did do, we made our own embroidery insertions. And then... Are um, these serger pin tucks? Those are serger pin tucks. And, and the lace attached. Primarily attached with the serger. That's right. And I love this flannel. This is what yes. my granddaughters love to sleep in. And these adorable, just a little top and these adorable pajama bottoms, which are absolutely precious. Again, made out of flannel. Yep. And it has this adorable... All of this serger. All serger. Except for the machine embroidery. That's right. Well, I think this is exciting, and that means it was fast, too. It was fast. Isn't that so cute? Jody? thank you yeah. so much for bringing these wonderful ideas for our viewers' inspiration, and mine, too, I might add. Thank you. And now we have a scrapbooking idea for you. Mm -hmm. 
Jody, I am so excited about your using Halloween and sports for your scrapbooking and sewing machine. I have a lot of, of Halloween and sports pictures at my house. Now show me exactly what I'm going to do with them. Well, I have to confess that I'm not a big scrapbook person until now. <laughs> until now. I had my sister, uh, La Linda, come over and give me a hand. And I think that we are merging together with scrapbooking because she enjoyed the embroidery part and I enjoyed the scrapbooking part. These little motifs that are done right in here as an embroidery design, stitch on paper. We've got the little spider web and the little spider. And then we've also stitched down the word Halloween. And you can see we just did some pumpkins right down in here, just to add a little accent to it. A machine embroidery. A machine embroidery. Okay, so cute. Yeah. I decided then to go a little bit further and decided to make my own embroidery stickers. And you can see the little motifs right in here, the little cheerleader, the football player, helmet, little football, and we made our own embroidery stickers with it. And your children's cheerleading and football pictures, which how much fun. Yeah. Now, how did you make those little stickers? Okay. It was very simple to do. <laughs> you want to find some embroidery designs that are small and simple. You don't want to have a real large embroidery design for this. You want to hoop up your fabric with um, cotton organdy at the bottom, and then you want to have a piece of felt on the top. Now remember the color of the felt that you want to use is going to be something that's going to complement the color of thread that you're going to use for your embroidery designs. Because you're going to just cut it out and use it then and stick it down? You're going to cut gotcha. it out. Yep. Okay. And so you can do several of them in one hooping. That's, that saves a little bit of time. That's so you do your embroidery and here we have a red helmet on red felt. Right. And then you cut it out and you're ready to glue it down on your wonderful little scrapbook page with your son's football picture. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the reasons I use the felt too, so that when you cut around it, it's not going to ravel like fabric would. Okay. Jody, that is, those are such adorable <laughs> pages. Thank you so much for sharing sewing and scrapbooking. Thank you. And now we have a machine embroidery technique for you. I'm so pleased to have as my special guest today, Lindy Goodall. Lindy is Vice President of Creative Designs for Cactus Punch. Lindy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's great to be here. I've brought a special little project for us today. It's a little gingerbread house. And what I'd like to point out is this is mostly embroidery. We have some embroidery over some 3D foam, but I really want to point out these windows because we actually have vinyl in the windows to make it look like real windows. And I'd like to slowly turn this around because we have a little dormer back here. Lindy, that is adorable. And we have some more windows on this side. And we have a little door. And inside our door, we have a gingerbread man. Now, all the images inside the windows are actually included on the CD, and you print them out on printer fabric. So let's take a look at this. I think that one should sit close to me. I'm taking that home with I me, know, Martha. I know, but I just love it. <laughs> Okay. Here's another example of embroidery over applique, or applique, uh, excuse me, over vinyl. And there's some tricks to working with the vinyl. You can't just do this with any design. For example, on my jacket, I have a standard applique with the embroidery machine. All these pieces are sewn down with the embroidery machine. They're pre-cut. We lay them down at a certain time and it just gets sewn in. With vinyl, though, if we used a standard design, all those needle stitches would perforate our vinyl and it would probably just fall out. So we need to use a design that's been created especially for vinyl. And now let's take a look at our vinyl. Here's a close-up view of our windows. You can see that the house is actually embroidered in pieces and then we're going to assemble it. This makes a great permanent gingerbread house oh. so you don't have to make one every year. And we're just using regular vinyl but there's some tricks, as I said. Here are the images for inside the windows. They're just printed out on your inkjet printer on fabric printer paper. And that comes with the machine embroidery yes, CD, Yes, it's it? on the CD, okay. so you just print it out exactly the way it comes. Now, when you buy your vinyl, make sure you buy a good quality one and get one that has a tissue paper. You'll want to leave the tissue paper on when you embroider, and so you'll have the tissue paper side up, 
Linda, is that available just at a fabric store? Oh, yes. Okay. It's readily okay. available. So here you can see that the tissue paper is still there. This one is finished. Once I've embroidered, I'll tear this off. The purpose of the tissue paper is to keep your foot from sticking to the vinyl okay. so it slides much more easily. And here's our finished piece, all ready to assemble. And we've just used um, that uh, plastic canvas to support our our so walls. plastic canvas goes behind it to give yeah. the support you need. Make little pockets and just. Oh insert my in. goodness! And I, that is so adorable. It looks just like a part of a little Christmas village. It will be. It's it the will beginning be. of our Christmas the village. The beginning <laughs> of a Christmas village. Well, Lindy, I just love it, and thank you for sharing those tips on machine embroidery on vinyl and on how to make that wonderful gingerbread house. Thank you, Martha. And next, I have a quilt square for you. I love this heirloom quilt. Actually, this would be something that I truly can tell you I believe could be worthy of being in a museum now or in a hundred years. The technique we're going to share today is a technique that we have named shark's teeth. Now, where did it get the name shark's teeth? Actually, Sue Pennington Stewart named it shark's teeth and it was from an antique petticoat that I purchased a number of years ago in an antique mall in Huntsville, Alabama. It looks a little like prairie points, but it isn't. Now the technique is really very easy to do. It's a little time consuming, but it looks so beautiful and it really is not hard. First of all, you start with a template. So I draw on my fabric stitch lines fold lines, and these are the little cut lines here. In other words, let me just kind of press it. I'm going to fold on the fold line on each one of these. Fold on the fold line and press. And I will then straight stitch to make tucks. Obviously, that will be what will happen if I fold it there. I will have tucks. Now this piece has been completed. You can see I have stitched in the tucks and the little lines, the little straight lines, here's what you do. You come in and clip them. Come in and clip them. I think I've clipped most of these. So I have a piece of fabric with tucks and a bunch of little slices on it. Now there's a wonderful product uh, that's a, a washable glue and I like the one that comes in with a little needle because I only want a tiny dab of it but you can use any kind of glue stick that's washable and then what I'm going to do is come in I'm going to where that little slice is I'm going to put just a tiny dab of glue and I mean a tiny dab on one side I'm going to take my little shish kebab stick fold it over and I might need to take a pen to hold it, especially if I put a little bit too much glue, just the way I did. Then I'm going to come on this side and put just a little dab of glue. I put a little too much on the other side, just a dab of glue. Then I will fold this sliced piece back all the way over to the sewing line. And I bet that one might stick. Well, I might stick a pin in that one too. Then we'll hold it until the washable glue dries. All right, now I did the same thing over here. This glue has already dried. I'll do the same thing going all the way down. I simply put a little bit of glue. Let me try another one here. A little bit of glue, a little bit of glue. I fold the point over. Hold it just a minute. Fold this point down, the little sliced points down. And if I need to stick a pin in it until that glue dries, I'll tell you, we used to, oh, this was not fun. Before washable glue, we used to take an iron and try to get in there. I have burned my fingers on a number of occasions. We will not be pressing this. Well, now that I have pins in it, and these are glass head pins, I can go ahead and press it if I want to. But, oh, I have burned my fingers trying to get those just holding them. Don't do that anymore. Now, when you have finished the whole piece, it will look like this. You see, I have my little points that are folded down. They're all glued down. Everything is going to stay right where it is. Now, there are two ways of stitching this. I'm going to show you the way where I stitch on top all the way across here, all the way through two layers of fabric. You can also stitch it if you want to by folding all of this back. Let me fold it back for you. You can put just the one strip under the machine and zigzag very, very closely along the edge all the way across. 
Now that's the way, if you want the shark's teeth to be have more texture in them, that's the way you stitch it. However, if you want them to lay a little bit flatter, you stitch it like this. And I'll have to be honest with you, it's a little bit easier to stitch it like this. So I'm going to do just a reasonably short, narrow zigzag, just wide enough. I'm going to stitch right on the, I'm going to guide it in the middle. I'm just going to stitch right down the stitching line once again. And I'm doing this where I'm stitching everything flat to the fabric, which I think I mentioned is the easiest way to do it. Let me move my glue here. And after the glue stick dries, then it is very easy to do. Just getting that little glue stick and getting those pointers in is the only thing that's just a tiny bit tricky. And I'll tell you what, this is a very tailored technique. We have used it on christening dresses. We have used it on ladies' blouses. It really has been one of the most popular of all the beautiful heirloom techniques. And we have certainly enjoyed teaching people how to use it. And I've had several people that have sent me beautiful christening dresses that have this beautiful shark's teeth on them. Now you see some things in heirloom sewing that look hard are really so easy. And even though shark's teeth take, it takes, they take a little bit of time to make, it is truly beautiful. Now won't you join me? I have a beautiful, beautiful vintage garment to share with you. It's really one of the prettiest in my collection. This is one of the most beautiful pieces in my collection, and I guess maybe I have four or five hundred pieces. I purchased this at the Paris flea market, so I believe it's certainly to be a French piece. Look at this one, it's a robe by the way, a silk and lace robe. Look at that magnificent collar with this beautiful wide lace. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift it up so you can see the details. As you can see, I do have some rot, just a little bit of rot on this, but silk doesn't hold up as well as cotton does over the years. And by the way, this would be about 100 years old. I'm going to open this sleeve and let you see how magnificent the sleeve is, it has a little scallop, uh, a little curved shape that comes down and very tightly gathered French lace around the sleeve. Now just come on with me down the front of this beautiful, beautiful robe and see the variation of the tucks and the insertion, wider insertion. And then this skirt is just absolutely magnificent. It has the wide insertion. And then there is a set of, let's see, one, two, three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six release tucks. The lace is in a cathedral shape. The, here the lace is in a square shape with mitering. And then on down the skirt with two tucks on one ruffle and then three tucks on another ruffle. And then just a beautiful ruffle with that magnificent wide lace on the bottom. I just have to show you the back. It is as magnificent as the front. As I said, this is, this is just my most beautiful piece in the whole world, I think. Look at the back. I mean, just to look at it is enough said. It has the tucks and the lace, and then these, this fabric and lace, the silk, is placed at an angle. Absolutely beautiful taste. Coming on down, you'll see that the, te the details of the tucks and the, and the miters, and this is actually a flip-flop rather than a miter here. It goes all the way down, and the back is equally as beautiful as the front, which was very true of the pieces of the Victorian period anyway, whether if it were a blouse or if it were a robe. For our Sewing from the Heart today, I have a wonderful letter here from Joanne Lewis who is uh, with the Christ Child Society of Greater Milwaukee. Joanne writes, Our signature project is giving layettes to babies in need to wear home from the hospital. Including in the layette are the following handmade items, a sweater and a cap set, crib size quilt, two receiving blankets and a soft toy, in addition to all of the other usual items which we purchase. We serve all children in need, regardless of race or creed. We have many other projects in the service of children, and our motto, which was written by Mary Virginia Merrick, who was the foundress of this uh, society, was nothing is ever too much to do for a child. And Joanne Lewis of Milwaukee, I do appreciate your sending this letter, and I would like to thank you and all the ladies in your organization for all you are doing. Thank you from all of us in the sewing world. And I would like to thank you for visiting with me in my sewing room today. I've had a wonderful time and I hope you have. 
could you come back next time?